Hello, Millennial Tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play um, Xenonauts. In, in my timeline, I just finished streaming Millennium 2.2, the best game of 1989. Um, in your timeline, it's just the next episode, probably. But um, hey, you should go check out Millennium 2.2. It's, it's a game. Good time for that music to stop. So let's talk about Xenonauts. I haven't played this in a day or two. Um, we're, I sort of decided that there's so many missions going on on this specific UFO phase that I'm just going to skip this one. Uh, this doesn't have any tech. Its resources are good. You know, and Androns are fairly easy. We do need to clear some UFOs. But that's like three more gigantic missions before we get any research going. And I would love to get the research going and keep progressing. You know, I can't get bogged down with four missions every UFO phase. So two or three per phase should be fine. We're not skipping stuff. We're just... Well, we're skipping stuff, but we're not we're not being too lazy, I guess. Anyway, the looks like for today, T Dogs McDogs on the A team, we're going against an old school Phase Three Terror Dreadnought because good resources and uh, shouldn't be that hard. I mean, the, the the Phase Three Terror is still tough, and seriously, I I am scared. Frightened, in fact, of the Phase 4 terror missions. Uh, they're they're going to be rude. But this is not a Phase 4 terror mission, so enjoy it while you've got it, is kind of the other thing. Don't worry, T-Dogs. You're just, you're just the chopper. This is, this is the dropship T-Dogs McDogs that just drop pods the uh, A-Team down on the ground. You'll be fine. Don't worry about missing a specialist. Haha, <laughs> worry. Capture them all and get all your antimatter. Or fail. It's really more of the uh, operators here. You gotta catch all the operators. Xenonauts, gotta catch them all. Okay, Terror Dreadnought against mostly Androns with some Herodan. Uh, we are near a corner. It's a fairly wide map, so not a narrow, narrow map. A bit of a wider map. I prefer that. We've got ourselves the Cat Tankulo. We've got some plenty of dudes with antimatter. Oh yeah, we brought we brought some backup stuff. Like I said, it's been a little while, so forgive me if I forgot how I geared everybody up. Um, I didn't. I usually gear them up right before the mission. This is the first time in a while where I took a little break and played a different game. So, oh no, you're gonna go down here and be our. Air, eyes, eyes in the sky. Power armor is likely overburdened. That's standard detail. We are... Dropping the med kit and a couple batteries, I think. That's fine. The, um, the other stuff will be good to go if we need it. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> So I brought a lot of ammo on this mission. I think I was concerned that we were going to die to Androns here. Just a little bit. This is our Mark III cannon. It's pretty awesome. Just ammo's heavy and all. Probably don't need two medkits at a time. We never take damage anymore. Mm. Oh yeah, some of these little reloads. Let's leave... I think we want to build, bring like one of each ammo type. Something like that. I don't know if three time units makes much difference, but... This gives us some assistance for the, uh, the antimatter weapons and a, you know, a couple reloads. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Trust in blue. When he says it's fine, you can believe him. Alright, Jarrell looks good. This is a nice refresher for everyone to see what you're equipped with, too. If you're following along, you can see your favorite soldier and what kind of weapons they have. Who's your favorite soldier? Okay, sniper, sniper. Antimatter, antimatter. I'm just having, like... 
two sort of opening squads here. One to go down and left, one to go up and right, because we know where the wall is, and this should be empty, probably, but, you know, this is probably the more dangerous angle. Alright, let's do it! The dangerous angle! You could catch a tier 3 operator. Okay, before I move out, let's check this side. The other dangerous angle! We got double the danger, double the fun! Okay, don't be silly, Blue. These are still terror troops, even though we are technically one tier ahead of them in terms of tech. Okay, so the drone's pretty high priority because it's easy and annoying. This guy's low priority. This guy's pretty high priority because that's a terror Andron. And, you know, there's a Roborex. That too. It's only a Mark II rifle. The good one's over there. Come on, Encarta. Come on. You failed me. You weren't supposed to miss twice out of three. Alright, don't worry. Drow with an antimatter Mark III, right? This is. I should just start with this in the first place. Smoked him. Alright, that weapon's really good. Now, I was gonna use someone to like open the door, and then that didn't work. Let's just take a peek over here before I commit. You know, this is a nice little corner though. We're gonna have to deal with uh, the big, big Robo guy. Robo, Robo Rex. His friends call him Robo Rex. Not bad. Well, we lured out his... Oh, I didn't even know Roborexes had overwatches. But apparently they do. I'd rather move out of the way than have a second shot with that garbage aim there, David. Come on, buddy. What about Faye? From this range? Oh, you know, antimatter miniguns are pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. We got onto the next phase. That was what I was hoping for. Now, on the other side of things, I kind of want to let our tank out. I think that's the best next plan. Basically, uh, something to lure some shots out. And you never know, maybe kill this guy. It's fine. Catankulo will be okay. It's possible I could have had a sniper shot there. In fact, it's pretty likely if I had shot before I moved Catankulo. So that was a bit of a mistake. Just like, technically I have a shot here. Not that it's gonna do much. Apparently, energy doesn't really work on uh, Robo Rexes. Because we've never been able to disassemble one, I don't really know what they're strong or weak against. Oh, my global hotkeys work again! It's so nice now that we're not locked down to an Amiga emulator that limits everything I do. Well, we, uh, we did not handle this guy at all. And we haven't scouted quite as much as I'd hoped. One, two, three. Oh, I didn't even see that guy either. So there's a operator and an operator. Okay. Well, I still think it'd be better to kill this first before we, like, we're not going to kill this guy this turn, I don't think. And, um, 
I would prefer to knock the Roborex down before it's inside of my, uh, my group. Because that will be much more annoying if it gets in there. Pretty good, pretty good pistol here, you know. Come on, Blood Angel. It would have been very impressive if we were able to take it down with a couple extra shots like that. But that's it for this turn, pretty much. Ah, you know, we'll go for it. Will we? We'll totally go for it. Uh, he might be, he's probably close. 36 is not close enough. All right, well, try not to die to Roborexes and Terror Androns. They're only phase three enemies. Plus there's a lot of meat shields out there. That's okay, you can't kill Cat Tankula like that. See, Roborex is just gonna be busy killing farmers and stuff. At least he can't shoot laser beams anymore. We got a shield pointing that direction, no big deal. The operators really aren't too Dang it, there's another drone. I hate those things. I hate those guys. Somehow that farmer survived. Okay, well, that was a fine end of turn. Let's see if we can chew through this guy's shield. Catankulo. Okay, Catankulo needs a little break. Uh, he's definitely off his game, not getting a lot of hits in here. Uh, it's too bad, it's too bad. It's probably overkill, but... <clears throat> Overkill might be the best kind of kill. Well, if we can hit him at 95%, that might just destroy in one shot. Blood Angel. Expert marksman. Pistol marksman. Hey, look, a Herodin's in that room. Oh, man, it's nice to be fighting Mark III Androns again. They are squishy. So how do we handle that punk? Well. That's not too bad. Two hits, you know. As long as you can get out of the way and someone else can fire. Like awesome guy. Oh, those Mark III antimatter. Yep, they still got it. Now, we didn't deal with the Roborex, make no mistake, and we have done a very bad job at dealing with this antimatter jerk. Eighty-three percent, zero for three. Ah, uh, this feels like C team. Is this C team? I think it's A team actually, but it sure feels like C team. Maybe I'm a little rusty here. Yep, sixty percent. All right, Encarta did okay with the. Uh, Kind of old school Mark II pistol. I would just like him to not be shielded this turn if I could at least get him out of that. There we go. We had, uh, we have two Mark III antimatter rifles. This should be an easy mission as long as I don't throw it away. That was throwing it away a little bit, but. Nah, we're fine. I'm gonna actually Scorch Earth this guy. He's the most dangerous unit nearby by a fairly long shot. 
He only needed one of those, but overkill, thanks. Okay, drone, Andron, civilian. We did not deal with the Sizen, but whatever. And uh, there's still the Roborex, of course. We know where he is, we just uh, don't care. Nah, I care. We'll get maybe a reaction shot. We got a 19%, 19 reaction fire there. David's got 10 reaction fire there. You know, I can count on them. They'll just kill it when he charges over. Oh. Well, <clears throat> I think that's a dead civilian. Sorry, Blood Angel, but... You know, when your character can't hit anything... It reflects poorly on the person who asked for the soldier. You are connected, after all. Okay, so this guy should be easy pickings. Why did you stop moving? That's a very confused cat tankulo there. Oh, it's the box. It's always those boxes. I forgot there's a box in the smoke. Okay, so Roborex in a house. This might be a good opportunity for a little grenade. This is why you should bring some explosive grenades. Now we got some good shots. Ah, one, one ninety percent is good enough. Eighty damage. Okay, so. Can Blood Angel get revenge? Mark three pistols. 100 damage every time. And there's just nothing else to talk about. It's pretty solid. I think what we should do is uh, antimatter minigun him while he's down. And then get back, because that should put him pretty close to exploding. And now we can just finish him off from range. Figures. Now, I'm pretty sure we tested out as well that, uh... We know, I'm pretty sure we know... That, uh... Shock damage works on uh, downed Roborexes. Although it's, it's tanky, you know. Yeah, shock weapons definitely work. Okay. Well, this is looking looking like a nice start to the mission. Roborex down. Uh, the first terror Andron dealt with for now. So we've got an entrance down here. We'll clean this corner before we uh, move up. Same thing over here. Make sure it's nice and safe. We'll do a little bit of flying around next turn. Make sure everybody's reloaded. In some amount of cover. I might even just open this Robodog box next turn just to speed that up a little. Okay, a normal Robodog, not too bad. There should be some bigger drones, so the medium and huge, medium and large drones are definitely not uh, completely free. They do a lot of damage, even though we've got pretty awesome armor. Oh look, I didn't have to open up the Robodog box, it's already open. Now, antimatter should work on these. 
They're no RoboDog Ghost. Now, again, I don't want to be... Like, I don't want to get cocky here or nothing, but this might be a fairly easy mission. Now, you've only got a Mark II pistol. You're not going to be killing him with that. Yeah, the medium, medium drones might be the worst for sure. But it's at least it's only a Mark III, you know. This cannon does a lot of damage, man. Maybe even overkill damage for this phase of the game. Alright, so this side of the map, clear. Over here, the way we'll do it is with flying. Robodog, don't worry about him. And then Andron, yeah. See, that's what you gotta watch out for. We have a pretty good map. These, uh, this road and, like, this is a nice terror mission. This is the kind of terror mission, even if we weren't fighting Androns, that if we were in phase four, I would have been pretty happy with this. You know, defeat a few starters, and then you've got some nice barricades to work through with cover, like line of sight blockers. Not just, you know, 40%, but like actual, they can't see you. We keep this up. Blood Angel's gonna get a lot of accuracy at the end of this mission. Well, maybe his... Maybe his accuracy's already maxed out. <laughs> Could be the truth. You know this music? I do know this music. It's pretty awesome. Playing my OC Remix album again, which is... I find it very relaxing, because I know the songs, they're, they're pretty much all vetted, so I enjoy them without too much worries. There's a couple singing songs, but overall it's safer than the, uh, the random playlist on YouTube. Yeah, Deus Ex, awesome game. I don't think I'll ever Let's Play it. Um, it's just not the kind of game I like Let's Playing, generally. It's mostly because of the stealth mechanics. I, I know you don't have to use stealth mechanics, but it's kind of built around it. A lot of the Deus Ex games are, what do you call them, pseudo-stealth? It's certainly a large aspect. You can just fight your way through everything, but it's probably not recommended, I guess. Oh, I forgot about somebody. Ha ha ha! Please don't die. Shh, those drones, man! Those drones! Well, this is why we do a warm up episode. <laughs> warm up on a terror mission. Gotta get back into the, uh, the spirit of Xenonauts. Ah, oh, Zep is fine. That wasn't too much damage. Yeah, the blood weapons, well... Tier 3 blood weapons against a tier 4... It's not Guardian, but it's still pretty high chemical defenses. Honestly, he might have been better off against a blood cannon anyway. Because I think in the air... The, 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 like the smoke will fall down to the ground. So you might actually be more protected from blood cannons anyway. You'll take the impact damage, but maybe the area of effect damage doesn't hit you because you're up in the sky. I'm not sure about that. Could do some science. Oh yeah, we can just kill everything with the Mark III antimatter. 
that's man yeah I don't really see how Sonic is gonna beat out m the antimatter even the mark 3 antimatter seems significantly better than anything I saw at Sonic level which is weird I I'm gonna you know we'll keep sciencing it up but it really might be antimatter or bust for the late game I was gonna heal up somebody, yeah. Seeing as I meant to heal him and then I forgot about him. We already forgot about him once. We can't keep forgetting about him. Blood Angel, you've probably got a med kit. There we go. Barely even injured. Alright, so next turn we'll lead with Blood Angel with the shield and the better armor. Almost forgot one of my dudes. Ah, there he is. Big old heavy drone. And a Robo Reap. One of these days, I might have to look into how suppression's math works. I don't know if I have enough energy for that anytime soon, but... I kind of like to know what triggers a unit to be suppressed or not. Weapons have a suppression stat, but other than that, I don't really know much. Okay. Well, I definitely don't want to end my turn in the middle there, so... David, you're letting everybody down with your terrible accuracy. Come on, Hades, you're way more accurate, right? I'll take it. I suppose the uh, the Mark II drone is probably the bigger threat. Also, easier to destroy. Robo Dog and Herod. Oh boy, lots of stuff down here. Okay, now we're getting excited. Every step you take, there's a Terror Herod. In. <laughs> uh, boy, that would be great if we could kill him. Sadly, he's up in the air, which means we lose his weapon, but... Well, we did a lot of damage. Sure. Come on, awesome guy. Bam! Potentially one blood, blood cannon dealt with. Now, this is not super safe. For a variety of reasons. Tank can't get down there yet. Alright, I'm going to take one more shot with my EMP dudes. It's a good shot, but it's not going to be enough to kill a Robodog yet. Oh, we'll try the uh, the antimatter. It, the doggo might be close to dying, so hey. Good, one less thing to bite us. And then the plan here all along was for Mongrel to come from behind and throw a smoke grenade down. 30 time units, okay. 
So that should be enough to mostly keep these guys safe. We killed the medium drone, we killed a robo dog. There is a big drone, a harridan, and we did kill the other harridan, which was... The, there's probably quite a lot of things over there, to be totally honest, so... Better safe than dead. Over on this side, though, unfortunately, Encarta got drained. So it's going to be difficult to do much scouting here. I don't know if that was my smartest idea there to move up, but... Well, given the suppression capabilities of the, the large drone... ...and the amazing accuracy... ...of these terrible shock weapons... Here you go. Drow with the antimatter weapon, show them how it's done. Yeah, remember what I was just saying? Antimatter is like the best weapon we've ever had. This is good though. Put a power armor up front with lots of armor. Even if we don't get the kill. We might get the kill. These things are... Definitely tanky. You know... If I could kill one thing, I think I would want to kill the Harridan. Yeah. Seeing as the AoE can get him. It's pretty hard to hit him up there. You know, just given the, the shape of the UFO. Now, we'll probably all get suppressed by the Robo Reaper, but... These are just sort of suppression enemies, not really damaging enemies. Surprise! Okay, just one? That's not bad. Bring on the energy cores. And I can only hope that the Kalium turns into Mark IV antimatter weapons. That would be a dream come true. So, let's start with this group, because they've got a couple guys to deal with. I think the easiest way to handle this punk will be to destroy some... Just... Just destroy some stuff. Uh, no antimatter minigun on this side. No miniguns at all on this side. Whoops! Also, this is the form that's uh, very strong against uh, electron. Energy in general, I'm sure. Yeah, okay, that's probably worth it. Light them up. Those, uh... Whatever we call... Whatever we're calling that phase. They're, um... What am I trying to say? The, the middle phase of the Robo Reapers. I, like... Just Robo Reapers in general. They're not really worth a lot of resources. So burning them or destroying them with corpses... I, I kind of seems like a... One of the better units to kill like that, if you if you need to kill him. But, you know, we just zapped him anyway. Okay, good. Next. A likely nearly dead uh, drone. What'd I say? Okay, let's not charge up too much. We've already got three enemies on the radar. Well, Robo Dog, Robo Reaper, sizing in a wall, no big deal. Oh, awesome guy. Did you get suppressed? Probably. Okay, no shots that turn. 
Yeah, a bit of scouting. We'll turn around if things look sketchy. Another Andron. I'd say this spot should be safe enough. No backup weapon for Tim? I guess sometimes he's just got an electron cannon. Oh yeah, and the tank hasn't done anything yet, so get down here, cat, cat tanky though. Okay, let's uh, keep Scarbamir back. I might want to pick up some more ammo for him anyway. See you later, Tim. Might as well take a couple shots, I guess. It's only the Mark II pistol, so no, it's not that big a deal. Because the uh, the next phase will be uh, protected from Electron Weapon, we start with the Electron. And now, although we can't really shoot him right now easily, we might get some reaction shots with a weapon that will damage him. Save that for uh, next turn. Oh. That's a dead end, interestingly. These tiles, for whatever reason, are impassable behind the, uh, the battleships. Okay, looks like we're doing alright. We got a Robodog coming up. Sizen. Next phase, Robo Reaper. Very aggressive. Very aggressive. Hey, look! The Antimatter Overwatch worked! It actually hit twice. And three times. And it killed him. It interrupted... That's actually... Man. Okay. Over... Just, just uh, Antimatter in general. So good. It's been good since the beginning of the game. Since the first time we unlocked it. It's just Mark III was a huge upgrade from Mark II. Like, Mark II was better than Mark I, but it was generally small improvements. Mark III, though, whew, the damage is just so high. Like, I don't know what Mark IV could do. It probably doesn't need much more damage. It just could be lighter or snipers with more than two ammo. You know, stuff like that would be fine. Well, it's very energy efficient to kill shield guys with the tank that just ignores their shield. Alright, we've got a final phase Robo Reaper and a Robo Dog behind us. Yeah, I mean, these are, you know, technically final phase weapons. They're phase four. Um, you, you can't unlock the Antimatter Mark III's unless you've done some phase four missions. And we're fighting phase three and the aliens with them. So it's no surprise that we're stomping all over them. But, you know, I just can't hold back my joy of slaughtering jerks with armor-piercing, high-damage, accurate weapons. I think uh, next turn, I don't want to scout too much more this turn. Like, I knew this guy was down here somewhere, but he's in a pretty good spot. Pretty hard to hit him back there with just one dude. We'll move up a bit. You know, the tank, it, it, the tank might lure him out next turn, we'll see. Move some of these awesome antimatter rifles down a little. Get people moving up, just in general. Somebody dropped this weapon here. There you go, David. Hey, I spotted it. I remember my last. Uh, I remember last time <laughs> when uh, I dropped a weapon <laughs> outside the UFO. Could never find it. I'm going to send Scarbamir to pick up some more 
heavy ammo. Just because he's probably the first one to run out with this, this can type of cannon. Yeah. Alright. Bad spot. I gotcha. Ooh, sneaky behind the UFO, Robo Reaper. It's in the second form, so antimatter is our main way of dealing with it. This guy, yeah, I mean, we'd, it'd be nice to just destroy this house. Oh, no! Catankulo! You missed your shot. So speaking of antimatter mark 3. Yeah. That's just a pistol. I think the rifle is better overall. Like they cost the same amount and the rifle's got considerably more killing potential. But it's definitely nice to have a shield guy with a mark 3 pistol. Is it more valuable to have riflemen that can shoot 3 times or someone with a shield that can just shoot in single bursts? There he is. Sneaky little Andron. Well, that's not very safe. He is, uh, actually pretty hard to get to back there. I'm surprised he had a shot on us. Well, he, he would have taken a shot and moved back, but, like, sometimes they just find really good holes to hide in that they just... It's like, you know, the computer maybe just knows that you don't have the ability to, uh... To find them, you know, if if they, if well, not to find them, you know, I, what I'm trying to say is like uh, they know where to move that they have good line of sight protection. That's what it seems like. Now it doesn't beat grenades and antimatter at all, but it can be difficult to spot them and get any shots. Blood Angel would like the blood weapons. Well, uh, we can pick them up and technically shoot them on the mission we're on. But sadly, Androns are pretty much immune to chemical damage. Or literally immune to chemical damage. So they won't really do us any good. But I, I see the theme there for Blood Angel. We got the reaction shot on the dog. A little bit slow. Who was that? That's pretty pretty nice little shot there. Oh yeah, I forgot about that guy. More Robo Dogs. I mean, really, at this point, I just see free resources when the Robo Dogs charge at us. Until we're fighting. Oh, there's the blood weapons. Uh, until we're fighting. Um, Tier 4 Robo Dog Ghosts, they just, they're not that dangerous. Alright, Hades did an amazing reaction shot. I'm gonna say I'd like to see what's going on down here, but there's quite a lot of stuff going on down here. So that, <laughs> that's a sign that either they used a blood grenade or more likely someone has a blood cannon and just missed. And I expect this guy just has a blood pistol. Uh oh. We ran out of ammo, sir. I don't have any weapons that work on civilians specifically. I mean, it's not a big deal if I stun him, but that's not our weapon specialty. Don't worry, Tim. You'll be safe in the bathroom. Oh, I was doing all this? I didn't even see my guy back here. 
There we go. Alright, one less threat. There's probably a blood cannon coming, though. I just want to kill this dog. Oh, well, waste my shot. That was dumb. I didn't think that would hit the tank, but... Sometimes. Sometimes the game surprises me. Uh, no, what I'm trying to say is uh, I don't want to use the tank to kill the dog because I want the tank to move up to potentially... Alright. To potentially protect these guys that are standing out in the open, but in theory to deal with the blood cannon. Antimatter. Yeah. This is, this is what I was expecting. Move that tank down. Blocks any shots at my weak alpha armors, at, at least in theory. And, uh, you know, they'll t probably cheat and they'll blaster bomb it around anyway and boomerang it in. But <laughs> if they can boomerang the shot, if they can bend the bullet, there's nothing I can do. Okay, don't forget about this guy. Can't actually hit him from there, oddly enough. This is that thing where the AI uses their advanced knowledge of cover to put themselves in spots where you will never be able to get, get, get hit them. <laughs> oh yeah, don't forget about my uh, reload dude. It's certainly nice having uh, some backup on the dropship. As soon as you do one long mission, you're happy to have it. Even if it takes us hours of prep time. But we did the prep time a couple streams ago, so... No biggie. Seventy percent? That's worth it. When all you need is one shot... Now this one will be charging towards us because he's in melee mode. So in theory, once he leaves his smoke bubble, we can overwatch him and finish him off. That's the theory. But it might just be an ankylo theory, not an ankylo fact. Down here, they're certainly hiding behind some of these walls. one of those times where we need more grenades. Also, this is where the teleporter is, so careful there. Alright, well that's as far as I was really planning on scouting with Tim. Tim who's gone to bed before his guy could make it home. I got him! Lucky guess, but I mean, you can kind of tell if you remember your end of the turn. Good. One dead, uh, that was the one with the blood rifle or blood heavy weapon or something like that. That's still not necessarily whatever made the red cloud, but... Pretty happy with that snipe, just shoot a random wall and actually get what you're looking for. Power armor should be moving up first. And people who can fly should be helping me find aliens. Yeah, maybe more like next turn. Should be relatively safe behind the... Uh, should have reloaded there first. Sorry, awesome guy. Should be relatively safe behind the tank. Hey there, Jelka. Some gambling ankylos in live chat tonight. Not to wreck a good thing, but what, what would you live tubers think if I lowered, or not lowered, raised the cooldown on the dice mini game a little bit? Not crazy, but it's a five minute cooldown per, per dice game right now. 
And I'm trying not to let the mini games take over the chat entirely. Also to prevent the um, the inflation of Ankylo points. I could change it to one per person every ten minutes instead. I don't know. I haven't I haven't decided yet if that's better or worse. Right now five minutes seems okay, and it's not being spammed too much. But uh, I don't know. Just one of those thoughts. A lot of them, a lot of the, the the games we have, they really are just works in progress. They're not meant to be finalized yet. So, um, you know, if people are enjoying them, I, I don't think I want to restrict access, but... I suppose the people who, uh... <laughs> Look at this! We could originally move down to here. Nope. But yeah, no, the people who uh, use them and are, la and are, you know, active in chat probably think they're a good idea. You'd have to ask the people who aren't active and... Why aren't they active? Oh, too much chat spam. Well, they're already gone because there's too much chat spam, so we'll never hear their opinion. <laughs> Not that I'm terribly concerned either way, but... Yeah. You need to be the orange ankylo. Okay, yeah. I mean, that's that's sort of... I forgot to reload again. Dang it, Blue. What? Get your act together. Uh, you know, part of the fun is like... Uh, Jeesh, Blue Inky bot. How rude. Just no caps allowed. No, um, part of the fun, of course, is ranking up. It's more a matter of like, okay. Um, when I when I'm trying to think balance for any sort of game, I don't want it to be set so that you like if I'm playing a game, I don't want to have to grind for for <laughs> for hundreds of hours to get to the final level. Like, I don't generally like that in a single-player game. But, online gaming, and I suppose, for the most part, a chat game on a live stream would probably compare more to an, an MMO in terms of progression. Just because there's a lot of time that goes by. It's, it's a little bit passive, but you can... Um, well, and it's also, like, it is competitive to a degree, because you guys sort of compare points against each other all the time with top 10 and all that. So I don't want the balance to be like you know you can make it to the final Ankylo tier in two streams. It's obviously not like that but I have to try to strike a balance between progress and time sync to a degree. Not I mean because mostly it's just like how am I trying? What am I trying to say? Like, the really large number of points. Once you get past, oh, I don't know, a thousand or two thousand, whatever rank those are, you can pretty much play all the mini games as much as you want. You you can use all the chat features. You know, it's it's not like there's a a shortage at that point. Before that, like when you're when you're low on points, when you're when you're in your first hundred or two hundred. You could theoretically run out of them if you lost a couple bad missions. That's much less of a worry once you're in the thousands. So once you're over a thousand, it's more like... You're more of a collector. <laughs> you're a point collector, a rank collector. And I guess at that point, maybe I should just change the uh, point requirements for the higher levels. If I'm worried, like... Tim is in chat giving points away all the time. Well... Yeah. I... <laughs> I still have some reservations about the usage of that give points command. I, uh... Most people seem to understand, but some people just use it to to just manipulate the point system, it seems. It'd be... I mean, I could probably... Ugh. I could probably program it so that it doesn't allow gifting to people with more than X number of points. So it's like, if you've got over 1,000, you cannot be given points. But 
I mean, I don't know. People will just find another way to abuse it. <laughs> like... It, I definitely appreciate, like, the like the whole purpose of the give points command was for new viewers that only have zero to a hundred points or something around that. Just to get a little boost to get started. Totally fine. But, at some point, it's, it's not like you need 50 points to play a game. Not, not when you've got a thousand. <laughs> you would have to have a very extended unlucky run. To go through a thousand points faster than you gain them just by watching. I don't even think it would be possible, actually. Well, statistically possible. I mean, like, if you can play... Let's see. You can play the dice game once every five minutes. You make ten points every ten minutes. So if you played it every cooldown and you somehow lost every game... You would spend 10 points, you'd lose 20 points and gain 10 points every t 10 minutes. So you'd get a net loss of 10 every 10 minutes. But the dice game isn't like that. It's not going to make you lose every time. On average, you should lose 10 and win 10, and sometimes win more. So you would actually break even on the dice game, and you would just get your passive 10 points for 10 minutes. Um, the missions and stuff have somewhat of a net gain as well, although the last time I looked at them, I didn't think they were a huge point um, generator. Maybe we'll do a live stream one day where we just calculate points and we just we just work on economy man manipulation. Ankylo Prestige. <laughs> yeah, sure. Once you get to uh, a million points, you become right Ankylo 2.0. <laughs> I mean, as far as I know, I can just keep adding ranks as long as I want. <laughs> just like a true MMO. Well, not really MMO, more like a uh, one of those uh, online shooter type games. They do more of that prestige stuff. What do you call those games nowadays? In my day, back in back in old Blues day, we just called them online shooters. But now there's all these, like, arena... What do we call... I don't even know what you call them. Arena multiplayer or something like that. Whatever you call the Fortnites and Destinies and all that stuff. I don't really keep up on them. They were never the kind of game I enjoyed anyway, so... It never made much difference to me what, what people wanted to play year to year. Oh yeah, there's a there's a reason active viewers gain have the ability to gain points quicker than passive viewers. It is it encourages the chat to be active. I think you know, selfishly speaking, I think it's probably better for my chat as far as a new viewer is concerned to have some amount of activity. You know, you don't want a dead chat room. Um, it's kind of off-putting for a new person to a degree. Now, you don't want it to be spammed incredibly with a million minigames, perhaps, but to, to a fair degree, I would say having some amount of usage is preferred. You know, I, I'm trying to see what the balance is. Like, when, when is it less helpful and more detrimental? I don't know that kind of answer just yet. For now, I just added them in there and, you know, we'll see. Does that make, that probably makes sense. I'm not trying to, like, you know... I'm not trying to use this as some gigantic gimmick. It's just, it's all good fun. But there is some value for uh, the health of the stream, I would say. Like, online, that's just, you can just call them an online FPS. What a boring name. Come on, come on, Gen Z or whatever. Come up with a cooler name for your Overwatches and modern shooter games. We called them online FPSs decades ago. Of course, our online FPS. Mm, that's scary. Antimatter. Maybe antimatter friendly fire will be the, the real killer at the end of the game. Unfinished life service money stealers. Okay. Yeah, that's a good good name for, for it. 
I have a feeling Thornum probably doesn't identify as Gen Z, though, if I had to guess. He's, sounds like you're closer to my age than the the youngsters playing the playing the the new cool games. I really I really don't keep up with them very well. Just capture the flag. <laughs> capture the flag online. I'm a millennial, thank you. Does anyone actually call themselves a millennial? It seems like most people I know, at least my age, who are technically in the realm of millennial, in, as, ter as far as, like, birth date is concerned, are like, yeah, but I don't identify, like, I don't, I don't act, like, I don't want to be called a millennial because I don't do anything that stereotypically is millennial. <laughs> But again, I, I'm kind of at the the older, just at the limit of what is considered a millennial anyway. If you're 1989, you should be a millennial for 19. If you were born 1989, that would that would be a middle middle of the middle of the generation millennial. It's generally considered born between 1980 at the very high end and the year 2000. 20 years is kind of per generation. The boundaries are very loose, but it's typically around that ballpark. And then Gen Z or whatever is born between 2000 2020, give or take. It's not a hard line. It's just... Uh, yeah, if you're born 94, you're probably closer to a classic millennial in my eyes. I would say people born around the early 90s are what the stereotypical millennials are. So, if that's about your age, and you think you fit in with the millennial crowd that grew up with lots of computers and tablets and phones and stuff and all of that, that's, yeah, I would say that's, that's more what the stereotypes fit. Not that any one person is exactly the stereotype, but you know what I mean, like, you just have more in common because you grew up with all that stuff. When I grew up, we, we didn't have computers. Oh, uh, boomers are even, no, no. <laughs> Before millennials, I'm, I see the smiley face. Before millennials, Gen X. The Gen Xers are the forgotten generation. There wasn't very many of them. They're really uh, angsty about it. <laughs> Boomers are even further back, 40s to 60s. Again, the exact numbers are... No, There's no science, but... Boomers are the generation after the silent generation that fought in World War II and died, mostly. You know, the gap where they all they all were lost. I think it's... A, is it the silent generation? I'm pretty sure that's the silent generation. The generation where so many men died that there's they're all missing. There is also the great generation. Look, now we're going so far back, I can't, I can't remember it. It's too complicated. Let's get some historians in here. Let's get them historians in there. Millennials grew up going through tech. Yeah. I also heard there's a good, you could make a good definition, especially for Americans anyway, but if you were American, G millennials grew up pre 9 11. Before, like, they were, they were, they were not adults when 9 11 hit. And that sort of formed your um, air travel, scared of terrorists sort of mentality that wasn't really a thing before that as much. So, like, for me, my age, I hit 9-11 right as I graduated high school. So, I had quite a few years of air travel not being restricted and not really worrying about terrorists. Um, that's one of the reasons I'm not super fitting in with the, the common millennial tropes. I've talked to lots of people that are about even just five or ten younger, five or ten years younger than myself who grew up post 9-11 and everything is, you know, were all the air, airport security stuff is good because they were, you know, right right after that terrible travesty, it's all just to keep, you know, your keep your, your country safe and watch out for these crazy, ridiculous attacks. There was only ever one and for me, growing up before that, I just see all this airport security being absolutely ridiculous. Um, it doesn't even really work. <laughs> not to get political or nothing, but it's, uh, they call it security theater, not because it keeps you secure, it just makes you feel safer as if you were 
in a theater watching a show. <laughs> it's, it's really closer to that than any huge preventative measure. It's kind of weird. Anyway, not to ramble about that kind of stuff, but I, I kind of see it as one of those distinction again between the generations. If you if you grew up if you grew up after a major travesty, that's a that's a pretty good defining line. You could do the same thing with the world wars. If you if you were a child during one of the world wars, you had probably a much different outlook than the adults who lived and fought through it. It's a it's a big big culture shift. <laughs> I know La Casina. I'm I'm trying not to get political on my channel or too controversial. I I ad adhor that. But yeah, I, I don't really think I don't really think the security theater does anything but make some people feel safer and waste an awful lot of time and money. <laughs> the um it's not even really the air marshals, although I'm sure that helps. It's um they just secured the door the the, the cockpit doors. As soon as as soon as 9/11 was over, they re-engineered most of the cockpits and basically made a policy that it doesn't matter what happens in the passenger section, the pilots do not open the door, period. And it's pretty hard to hijack him if you've got a metal reinforced cockpit and no one allowed to open it. And it might be hard on the pilots to hear whatever terrible things are happening, but the plane will not be hijacked because, well, any damage you do to the cockpit door would just bring down the plane, which would crash, you know, that would suck. But at least you're not using it as a, a you know, a, a, a weapon. And again, that's just my understanding. I'm, whenever Blue is talking about these things, just keep in mind, I'm not an aviations expert or a security specialist. Take it with a grain of salt. Check your sources and all that. I like to be... I like to say things that I know are true. Like, I don't know, I don't want to spread misinformation, but uh, I'm sure I do once in a while accidentally. Meanwhile, you know, we're playing Xenonauts. Uh, this mission's been really chill, honestly. I'm, I'm glad it's a nice chill mission. I didn't want a terrible death mission to start. Since 9-11 you can't. Well, I mean... <laughs> oh, Jack Bauer. When did, when did that show... When did um, 24 come out? Was that... That must have been post 9-11, like 2000-something. I remember watching that. That was, that was a good, good TV series, right? People, people agree. Twenty four was good, right? Oldest system was a Sega. Yeah, I grew up. First, system, first console I had was NES, but I knew people that had a Turbo Graphics sixteen and a bunch of other really old consoles. Well, I guess what I mean there, Laxima, is uh, it's the pol It's not just the airport. It's not just the security doors. Although I'm sure the security doors help. Um, I'm pretty sure it's more... Before 9-11, no one had ever hijacked a plane without the intention of landing it somewhere. It was just... Like, it's like... You don't have a policy for a... For an event until something has happened. Like, you don't know... You don't know how to handle it when in the past, all that's ever happened was... I wanna land in Jamaica. Or I wanna... I want a million dollars, or whatever dumb things hijackers had tried to do in the past. But they'd never, like, hijack the plane to crash it. That was ridiculous. So because that has happened now, it's changed the rules. And if it ever happened again, the pilots wouldn't just give it over easily. They would probably crash it into the water somewhere. Because they wouldn't want to kill people in a building. That would be even worse. So most sane or rational pilots would, I would assume, crash the plane rather than let some terrorists take it over. I think that's not even that unreasonable to suggest. It's just in the past that was never a problem back before 9-11, so no one would have even thought that was something that could happen. Certainly wasn't something I was worried about as a kid, and I flew lots pre-9-11. You can't say hijack. Oh, well... The airport bomb jokes were always a bad idea, um, even before 9/11. <laughs> I'm old enough to know that that those kind of those kind of things predate the uh, the big terrorist update. <laughs> terrorist update 
9.11. That's the that's the patch version. I, it's been enough time, right? We can talk about 9/11 in 2020. We've got our own disaster. We can talk about the the previous disaster with a little bit of lighthearted fun. I know I know a lot of people died, but enough time has gone by that hopefully no one's super sensitive about that, right? I don't mean to be offensive, but like it's okay, right? Uh, yeah, there was like, I don't know if they ever released the full version, but I believe there was technically three hijacked planes, and the third crashed, rather than hit a building, because I believe, if I remember correctly, and again, I could be wrong, the story was, the third plane was later than the first two, so there was passengers on the third plane that saw the news, or they got the phone call. So they knew that two planes had crashed into the Trade Towers. So that changed the rules right then and there. And yeah, they probably fought to the bitter end. And I think they caused enough damage or something. Or the air, you know, the by then the Air Force was was up in there and, and, you know, the fighters shot it down. Either way, by the third one, the rules had changed and it wasn't crashing into anything anymore. It was going to get, it, the, you know, passengers would fight to the death or, you know, some... Uh, our, our F-17s, you know, our, our awesome jets that we've got in Xenonauts, they can take down a passenger airliner. There's no, there's no getting away from fighter jets. I think the story on the news was always that the passengers crashed it, but I think there was always a little bit of a hint that it's certainly possible that that didn't work and it was just shot down, but that wouldn't make very good publicity. I don't really know. I mean, that's maybe a little bit conspiratorial. No, trust Blue. He knows everything. Only Ankylo facts on this channel. I'm not one of those uh, jet fuel melt steel beams kind of guys. Boy, I'm dating myself now. Remember when all that was a meme? Holy smokes. That was some old school memeing there. <sighs> Let's see. Uh... So we checked this room... I don't know why I've been so hesitant to check that door. It's probably fine. I'm assuming there's going to be like the guy with the blood cannon, basically. And the guardian armor is really nice. Oh, it's just a little drone. Okay. Just a little, little, just a little droney. Five G causes Corona. Yeah, is is that like I don't I don't really keep up with the kids and their memes as much as. I'm sure some of you guys do, <laughs> but uh, is that is that the new jet fuel melt steel beams? Is it uh, 5G Corona? There's always a crazy conspiracy theory. You know, every generation's got a couple at least. There was uh, some. There was a protest in Vancouver. Uh, a couple weeks ago, a week ago, I forget. I didn't pay very much attention to it. It was in the news a little bit. And it was some people protesting the lockdown. Or It's not exactly a lockdown here, but, you know, things are shut down. It's an emergency. You can still buy groceries and go to daycare, but, like, you know, maybe you can't go to some parks, you know. Darn. It's terrible. The beaches are closed. Oh, no. But um, there's some people protesting. And, you know, in Vancouver, like some places, I don't know. I don't know how it compares to other cities around the world, but we have a bit of a thing about protests and rioting up here. Like, it happens pretty regularly. Um, Vancouver classically riots over uh, hockey games all the time and sports games. But, you know, there's no sports, so we got to find something else to get mad about. Um, but yeah, the protesters that were mad about the, the quarantine were actually mad about 5G China conspiracy causing... Something? I don't know. You know, one of the cool facts, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of Ankylofax, you know, obviously. Um, there's been studies done, and this happens, I think, basically every time someone builds a cell tower. And what will generally happen is the, the cell phone company, or, you know, whatever, the, the guys making the infrastructure, the company that builds all the, the big cell towers, they'll install a new cell tower because the people that live there want cell coverage, obviously, and they want to make money. 
But they won't even turn it on. They'll keep it unplugged. And then, classically, a bunch of locals that are mad that, hey, you built this thing in my backyard, get off my backyard types, you know, they'll freak out that, oh, it's causing whatever, wireless issues. Electricity is giving me headaches or migraines or, I don't know, pick a thing. It's giving me coronavirus, I guess. Um, and then, you know, they'll try to take them to court or something and, you know, sue them for harm. And this has happened apparently quite a few times, and it's kind of perhaps become a bit of a joke. Uh, you know, the cell phone, the cell company didn't even turn it on, so they can go to the court and say, well, even if it's possible, I haven't turned it on yet, so whatever they're telling you can't be true. I was going to turn it on, you know, next month. And that would set such a, such a deadly precedent that there's no point suing the cell companies because, I mean... <laughs> They got gotcha, you, right? Somebody was faking it. Let's not stay in there, though. We're pretty much ready for our breach. We haven't really been hit by any blood cannons, although I might have seen one. This might... This might be a nice, easy mission. <laughs> the firing line there. That's good stuff. Every now and then, some aliens pull some stupid trick like that. Makes me feel good. Just walk into a firing line. That is why, like... You know, when I'm talking overall good versus bad strategy here... Um, realistically, if you were trying to play this game on Iron Man without ever dying... And, and trying to play the, the best game you could play... You really would almost never do a full move like I always do. You would always reserve those time units and move... I, I don't even show this, this interface off. But everyone would move like half distance or less every turn. It would slow the game down. But you really would get some good reaction fire kills around corners and stuff like this. And probably if you did it all game, you would train up those reflexes a lot quicker. In the early game, your reflexes suck, and your accuracy sucks, so it's not going to do much. But, probably by the mid-game, if you consistently did it, um, it, you would be a lot safer. Sometimes rushing in and killing things is better, but sometimes, you know, these, these defensive lines really do work. It's, um, maybe not as good or as reliable as, uh, XCOM 2012 or XCOM 2's, uh, the reaction fire setup, where you actually use an action to, to do to set up a reaction fire, those things are kind of the basic play for those modern two action point XCOMs. Like, really, reaction fire camping is how you pull groups most of the time. You've got some correlation between high voltage towers and leukemia cases in newborns. You know. As always, I, I, I'm I totally fine with facts. If that is backed up by actual research, like, again, this is not really the place to look up articles or anything, but in anything, if there are good, good researches on it, and my definition of research is pretty high, like, I'm no scientist, but my bar for proper research is a little bit higher than some people's maybe. Like, it needs to be peer-reviewed, and it doesn't count... At first, it takes uh, a bit of time to be fact-checked. You need to have, like, a couple different studies that collaborate together sort of thing. The best studies are when you do, like, I forget the name of them, but it uses multiple different studies, aggregates all the data, and then gives you more information. Those tend to be my favorite because it's much harder to be... Uh, it accounts for a lot more biases and uh, short sampling sizes and stuff. Anyway, not to get all techy, but you know what it is. Yeah. When you have good research, and there's always the chance for that, um, that'll change my mind. You know, it's no big deal. I'm not so set in my ways that you can't uh, show me evidence that I'm wrong, and I would just say, no. Blue Ankylo never changes his mind. The theory from the conspiracy theorists is that 5G radiation weakens the immune system... Yeah, I mean, uh, there were certainly some damage done by, um, let's see, in the early cell phone age, it wasn't the cell towers, because they're, they're too far away, like, 
the power output from a cell tower to you through a couple walls, it's not going to radiate through your walls. And being outside in it, it's, it's distance, you know, energy does dissipate over distance pretty effectively through most atmospheres. You know, the sun doesn't roast you alive instantly because it's a long way away and there's a lot of, a lot of atmosphere in between. Standard how you get sunburn kind of thing. Um, but I have, I do remember, I'm pretty sure this was pretty much backed up. Um, some of the early cell phones, it wasn't, it wasn't the wireless, it was, what was it? Maybe it was, what was it? I think it was like, dang it, I don't want to get it wrong now, but it was some part of the early cell phones was over, it was emitting quite a lot of, of energy, whatever type of energy it was. And holding it right next to your brain was at least, uh, in theory, detrimental to your health. Because proximity is very important here. Um, having a cell phone on the desk beside you, probably not a big deal. But holding it right against your head was like, potentially, if it's strong enough, could be actually a problem. But, but that was, oh man, I can't even, I haven't heard that potentially even a fact information in decades, honestly. That was something I feel like we used to talk about back maybe in high school or something. So it might have just been one of those tall tales, like, like just like 5G, but back in 3G or 2G. <laughs> I don't know. The, you know, there's a bit of a mentality for people, you know, uh, we fear change, change is bad, and this is new, so therefore it must be bad. It wasn't tested enough not because I've noticed anything specifically, but because it's different. Therefore, I don't trust it. And I'm looking for any possible... Anyone to say, yes, you're right to be scared because it's different. There's always going to be a bit of that fear uncertainty when you get new tech. Oh yeah, reaction fire against xenomorphs. Good point, Thorinum. I'm talking about Androns and Sibilians. Uh, if you're fighting Xenomorphs, don't save those time units. You'll just blow them up next to your allies. Poppers especially will run right past your Overwatchers and then get shot when they're next to somebody and then they're dead. I do remember that happening all the time. That's probably one of the reasons why I don't reserve time units very often. It's just a... It's almost more risky dealing with the Xenomorphs if you get into the habit of saving time units you're just going to cause more friendly fire than if you just uh, don't ever. <laughs> Birds don't exist. I think those are not legitimate conspiracy theories. Those are just jokes on Reddit. It's like the, there's the there's the giraffe one. There's the bird one. There's uh, there's there's a, there's a few totally not robots kind of sounds like a conspiracy theorist conspiracy theory but they're really just just people joking with you right nobody really takes those seriously I i'm pretty sure nobody takes them seriously tinfoil hat theory tinfoil hats right there there was always so that was an older one for sure um that's like old school conspiracy theory back when radio towers were being built, back before cell phones were even a thing. And that was like, you could stop radio waves with metal. That's the uh, the whole thing with those, um, sheesh, words are failing me again. You can build a, a, a container that blocks radio waves uh, with metal. I forget the, the name of the thing. Someone in chat, maybe you remember the name of the thing I'm trying to say. It's in all kinds of science fiction and science shows and all that but it's a real thing you can uh, you can make it faraday cage there thank you faraday so that was all like that's all real stuff you can you can make faraday cages and um that will block out radio waves and stuff um see chat knows the words that i can't remember and theoretically uh the right mixture of tin foil might work as a little mini faraday cage for your brain uh, you, you know, you can block radio waves with stuff. That's, that's fine. Magnetic, magnetic, you know. There's, there's science, you know, you can do it. There's science to be done. The question is always, though, why? Why do you, uh, need to block the radio waves? Do the radio waves do anything? 
And if uh, you can't prove that the radio waves do something, uh, you're just kind of wasting your time. But yeah, I think that's where the tinfoil hats came from. And uh, I think that one became mostly a joke as well. Kind of like some of the silly Reddit ones nowadays where you've got... Uh, I'm saying Reddit, but you know, social media, wherever, whatever your, your social media of choice is. Um, Reddit's just popular these days, I think. <laughs> Does Blue know what's popular? No. Um, but yeah, there's, there's lots of sort of, they're more like in jokes than taken really seriously. Always been the case, always will be the case. I'm just getting old. I don't know what the kids do these days. Online gambling? I mean, that's been around since there was online. <laughs> First thing you got once there was an internet. Porn and gambling. <laughs> Any vice you can make money off of. Bam. Day one. And crappy advertisement with pop-ups. But yeah, any anything that could possibly make money and take advantage of people's weaknesses. <laughs> Credit cards have chips. Oh yeah, there's a... Um, that's a relatively new technology. Well, it's not a new technology, but yeah, the uh, the scannable chips in your in your credit cards and debit cards. It's uh, a feature nowadays. Um, it's the wireless. You can sometimes it's tap, like you you just hold it against a uh, processing unit. But you can certainly have them work at more than an inch. You can have them uh, be scanned from feet away if they're powerful enough with a strong enough. Um, it's just uh, I don't even know what the tech is exactly, but. It's, it's, you know, there's so many different wireless technologies between, you know, all the, all the different G's and Bluetooth's and so on and so forth. It's, you know, that stuff's out there. It's cool in the sense that, uh, it's, you know, hands-free, you can connect with a, a credit card wirelessly. You know, you, you, don't, you don't have to scan the barcode on it, basically. But, you know, if you, if you burn it down, or if you, if you, if you boil it down, not burn it down, RFID, yeah, that's what they call it. Radio frequency ID, so yeah, radio frequency. Not even very, that's what I was thinking, like, not even really high tech, just, it's got a chip in it. Now that we can make small little chips, you can put a little chip in there that emits a small radio frequency that uniquely identifies your device, and then you can connect over it to, uh, to sell stuff. But what I was going to say is, it sounds all cool and all, but how have barcodes been read for decades now? You've got a little laser scanner that looks at a bunch of black and white lines. Basically deciphers the black and white lines into essentially a product code. Like a, it's just a series of numbers, basically. Um, you know, we've had wireless transmitting of data in various forms. That was just using, you know, light. And you can scan a, a barcode from, I don't know, a couple feet away, maybe. Well, that's probably too much. Let's say a few inches away. A few centimeters away for those of you in Europe. It's just RFID for your credit cards is kind of the... I think it's like the banking industry is like looking for things to... Uh, not necessarily innovate off of, but... This is why you should upgrade your account. Or this, this, is, this is why you should bank with us. We've got a credit card that's got a computer in it. Come on, guys. Join up with Bank of Blue. We've got cards with microprocessors in them. Pretty darn cool, right? Those red ankylos don't have stuff like that. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of that in general. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a security guy. I'm not like a... I would definitely not think that I'm a security... Or not a... I don't think I'm a conspiracy theorist. I'm sure they all say that. We all say that. <laughs> but, um... You know, I do try to take... I try to be security conscious. I've got some experience with uh, IT and computers and stuff. Um, a fair bit of experience, you know, a little. And uh, therefore, I'm probably a little more aware of... Like, security vulnerabilities. Just weaknesses of your your technology than, than maybe your average Joe. Just a little bit. I use... I use the U block and the no scripts and stuff in my in my browsers. I don't I don't download file attachments without scanning them with an antivirus. <laughs> okay, boomer. You get you have emails, attachments? Psh, 
We don't use those anymore around these parts. Attachments are for old people. <laughs> the world, the world's, the world's not flat. It's concave. It's a, it's a disc. It's a, it's a concave reflective disc. Is, is, I mean, I have no idea. Let's let's not get into flat earthers, man. So how do we want to take this bridge out? We're almost ready. It's been a it's been a long episode, one and a half hours mission, but it's been a pretty chill mission. That's nice. A Mobius strip. That's a that's a, a abstract concept where you have a two-dimensional object, i.e. a rectangle, that connects at each end after a twist, so it acts more like a one-dimensional object than a two-dimensional object. Bam! Math! Hopefully I got it right. <laughs> Blue's gonna look real bad if he gets his his, his uh, definitions wrong on camera. It's the trouble with Let's Playing. You can't make any mistakes, because if you get it wrong, you can't go back and redact it. You know, like, I can't just take that back. That's recorded. That's going to be uploaded forever. You got to be careful. If I give you guys bad information, the internet will laugh at me for decades. All these apocalypse tubers in the future, I don't know, you know, they're watching this on a potato, but uh, they'll be laughing at me in the year 2200. Just timestamp it. I can't make annotations anymore. YouTube took them away. I used to, I used to do that once in a while. No annotations allowed. You gotta you gotta uh, accommodate the mobile viewers, the mobile the phone viewers, right? You guys watch it on your phones. Annotations don't work on phones for some reason, so uh, so no. I only brought one more EMP charge, and it's on the wrong side. Oh, we could do the EMP rocket thing. Oh yeah. We are doing that. EMP rockets just really good against robots. I remember YouTube when you could make an annotation anywhere you wanted. Any second, you could have 500 annotations pop up. <laughs> Little text boxes all over your videos. Boy, those were the days. Remember when that was fun? <laughs> Honestly, anyone that remembers that probably has nightmares of all those old YouTube videos where... Just random stuff pops up covering up any any possible chance of seeing the video. <laughs> Alright, uh, antimatter, electron, electron, antimatter, cool. Well distributed. Perfectly balanced. Symmetrical. Alright, now what I should do, I guess... Do I think I need to use both of these EMP charges? Not really. We're going to use one EMP charge and one rocket, and that'll probably be enough. Oh, you know, I should put a quick save down. I forgot that when I play Xenonauts, I'm supposed to use quick saves, because every now and then the game crashes. It's a good idea, Blue. Good idea, Blue. I didn't leave anyone to open that door, really. That's... Mm, could wait a turn and prep a little better. You just made so many annotations, you can't find the X's to close any of them? Yeah. There were some, those were some fun videos back in the day. Fun. Maybe not the best videos, but fun. No miniguns. I should always bring two miniguns. Because, you know, breaches and stuff. It's fine, you just get shot in the face, Tim. Blam! 160, not very good. Alright. Hades, you can take a hit, maybe. Blam! Dead. So we got a couple bosses back there. You know, they're only tier 3 enemies. What am I worried about? There's the minigun! I betcha, if we were up close, that would still shred our armor down to nothing and probably do some damage. Because that's still a very scary weapon, even though we're in pretty high-tech armor, comparatively. 
Alright, this is not that many, though. I was figuring there'd be more than just the, uh, the two of them. I guess if we want the corpse, we should try to kill the boss first, but, nah. It's gonna be more fun if we just do this. No! <laughs> well, <laughs> it costs 84 time units to throw a charge nowadays. It's actually easier to run up, drop it on the ground, and run away if you're in guardian armor. It's so difficult to throw these things, don't. Just drop them and run away because you're faster. <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez here could just drop it where they want it and get out of the way. That's good to know, though. Um, I hadn't really done the calculation myself, but now that I think about it, 84 time units to throw the thing, well, that's a lot of squares of running. <laughs> like, I guess you should just run and do that instead. You're not gonna miss this shot. I believe in you, Zep. I could destroy it with a grenade, but I believe in the power of rockets. Oh yeah! It, it actually didn't even kill them, but still, it looked cool. We uh, we killed the uh, tier 2 guy, but not the tier 3 guy. Okay, well, uh, cool, cool. Not flawless. We could just wait for them and not put anybody else up here. Just uh, let them walk around in the blue goo. Oh, right. <laughs> I left someone else down there not safe. Good job. It's fine. We've got Ripper armor, right? They can't, they can't hurt us. Okay, that was a little silly. I forgot I left somebody in the room. It would have been a good idea if no one was in the room. But, you know, I didn't, I didn't remember. Alright. So this mission, you know, it had some hard parts early on. But overall, yeah, it was fine. You know, tiny little bit of damage. I don't even remember how, oh yeah, the only damage we took was when I forgot to land my flyer. <laughs> anyway, look at all those stats. Shield guy, tons of accuracy and reflexes. Um, lots of accuracy and reflexes for Jarrell. I think these are just antimatter weapons are really good for getting you stats. So, cool. That's still... Honestly, I wasn't expecting to see any 10s or 8s on this mission. Like, that's a lot of... A lot of quality stats. I think we've... I have now confirmed that the Mark III antimatter is definitely better against Androns than the Electron weapons. The Electron weapons were really good when we got them, but now that we're in phase four, um, it's time to try to move on to antimatter. And thankfully by doing this mission, we should get some. Dark Heavy, Dark Cannon, you know, I, a little bit. Was this mission really worth it? I don't know. I did just spend an hour and a half. Whatever. Let's let's agree not to do any more tier 3 terror missions, right? I know they're pretty fun and they get us some good resources and and um, I did get You know, I got the UFO. The main reason maybe I did that was, you know, to be fair, the terror dreadnought gives us a lot of extreme alien control. That's still good stuff. But the amount of like antimatter is not particularly impressive. You know, it's kind of random how many weapons get destroyed by Herodons being blown up in the air, or Androns not even dropping them, so... You know... I mean, we got... what? If we count those two smart weapons, which we might have got, that's three. Four, five. We might have got some dark pistols that we just, uh, you know, not enough to disassemble. But I think I've got one somewhere else, so we could count that as 6-7. And then that's probably it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that was an amazing haul by any means. Definitely not amazing. You know, six alloys added to the stack. 
Some Robo Dogs. There should be some Terror Robo Dogs. They're a little better. I one thing I suppose. It's hard to know yet without having you know beaten the game before. But it's definitely possible that all this Kalium will be very useful late on. For now, we've never found a use for Kalium. So far, they're basically like a what do we call them? An, uh, a toxin core or a toxin gland. So, so far the Kalium has been garbage, but I'm hoping that that's, you know, it's kind of the antimatter looking item for the whole game. I'm really hoping that turns into some, uh, basically Mark IV antimatter. If, if, I wish I knew, and I could probably dig through the files if I really wanted, but we'll leave it as a surprise, but I am hoping that, you know, honestly what would be fine is if Mark IV weapons are about the same as Mark III, but they just use a different resource to build them. Instead of anti-cores, like Mark III can be anti-core based, and then Mark IV could be identical, but be Kalium based, and I would be fine with that. And even if, like, that's the, that would almost be, yeah, I mean, I prefer Mark IV was better. Like, I'd like to have some ultimate weapons of destiny and destruction. But even if they were very similar, but just less resource limited, that would be totally fine by me. And uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but, you know, either way would be fine. Awesome weapons. Probably worst case scenario is Mark IV is way better, but also uses double the antimatter cores. At which point, that would kind of suck, actually. Anyway, future tubers, I should probably end this episode. Uh, I think, I'm just double checking here, but I'm pretty sure I, I remember C Team having... Uh, some smart pistols, maybe? It'll be alien... I don't even know what phase it would be. Where's the smart? Where's the brains? Alien antimatter. Yeah, right there. Smart rifle. Okay, well. Sure, have that. But yeah, there's also... They're calling them Kalian tubes in the inventory screen. So I'm really hoping that that's independent of the antimatter course. Or it's possible they just do nothing. And then I'll be a sad Ankylo again. Alien antimatter. Alright, well. We've definitely got a lot of Kalium tubes, so that's hopefully what leads us something to something good. Uh, I did send over one more rifle from C-Team, which will turn into, later on, I just gotta remember, disassemble one rifle. It'll just be one antimatter core when it gets here, so. Let's, uh, smart rifle. Oh, smart, no, smart heavy. I sent a, oh no, I spent a rifle. I need three rifles. Or three pistols. Nah, got confused. Anyway, future tubers, thank you for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I don't think I'll do any more Terror Dreadnoughts. That was kind of not exciting enough, but it was nice for me because I needed a nice. It was double nice. It was. Uh, it was. It was good to have a a warm up here before we get to the actual phase four stuff. You know, with with more danger. So I will see you guys next episode for episode 540 of Blue Pays. Xenonauts X Division forever. See you there.